Brothers and sisters, I share with you a particular salah, a type of prayer that many people are completely unaware of despite our need for it several times a day. It was a salah, a prayer that was performed by the Prophet of Allah Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. When his wife Sara was taken away from him by a tyrant, he knew exactly what he needed to do. During this calamity, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam started to pray, calling upon his Lord during his salah, and Allah Almighty did not let him down. In fact, Sara would come back to him from the tyrant unharmed during his salah, subhanallah. This is the same salah prayer which was carried out by the Prophet of Allah Zakaria alayhi salam when he wished for a child despite all of the odds being against him. He was an old man, his wife was aging, and she herself was barren. And again, it was the knee-jerk reaction of the Prophet of Allah Zakaria to go down and to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what was the outcome? فَنَادَتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّي فِي الْمِحْرَابِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكَ بِيَحْيَىٰ Allah said, so the angels called him as he stood in prayer with in the sanctuary that Allah Almighty gives you the good news of Yahya, confirming a word from Allah, an honorable and chaste and a prophet from the good ones. He received this good news when? After Salah? No, during the Salah that we are speaking about. SubhanAllah, it was their comfort and it was their first port of call. It's also the prayer that was performed by Juraj, the worshiper, who was falsely accused of adultery and realizing the weight of the calamity that he was in, he requested a moment from the people to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he requested to see the baby. He poked him in his belly and he asked the newborn, who is your father? The baby miraculously responded by saying, my father is so-and-so the shepherd. And this became the end of the ordeal of Juraj the worshiper. Again, notice, subhanallah, how the very first port of call for Juraj was what? Was prayer. In fact, in the life of the greatest of them all, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his immediate go-to was salah. As Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, he said, Kana idha hazabahu amrun fazi'a idha salah. Whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was distressed by a matter, he would rush to salah. He would rush to salah. This is the prayer which you carry out, dear brother, dear sister, at the very scene and at the very moment of a difficult situation that happens in your life. Savings that have disappeared, a loved one who passes away, a heartbreaking and distressing diagnosis at the doctors, a defamatory piece against you by a newspaper or any media outlet, an exam that was failed, an opportunity that was lost, salah. In fact, in one of the most inspiring descriptions of salah prayer that one could ever come across from the words of a scholar are the words of Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim. Listen to this long list of benefits that he says comes with salah. He said, As-salatu majlabatun lir-rizqi. Salah is a reaper of provisions. Hafidatun lil-sahati, a preserver of health. Dafi'atun lil-adha, an opposer and remover of harm. Matradatun lil-adwa, a repellent of illnesses. مغذيةٌ للقلب strengthen of the heart مبيضةٌ للوجه illuminate of the face مفرحةٌ للنفس a giver of joy to the soul مذهبةٌ للكسل a remover of laziness منشطةٌ للجوارح an energy giver and a stimulant to the limbs مُمِدَّةٌ للقوى a supplier of strength شَارِحَةٌ لِلصَّدْرِ a provider of happiness and inner expanse مُغَذِّيَةٌ لِلْرُوحِ nourisher of the soul مُنَوِّرَةٌ لِلْقَلْبِ an illuminator of the heart حَافِظَةٌ لِلنِّعْمَةِ a preserver of blessings دَافِعَةٌ لِلنِّقْمَةِ a repellent of punishments جَالِبَةٌ لِلْبَرَكَةِ and a bringer of blessings. مُبْعِدَةٌ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ as well as a means of distance from shaytan. مُقَرِّبَةٌ مِنَ الرَّحْمَانِ and a means of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ar-Rahman. Allahu Akbar. Have you ever heard of anything that brings about so many benefits like what you just heard? These are the worldly benefits of salah, let alone the hereafter. Then Ibn Qayyim, he said, وَبِالْجُمْلَةِ فَلَهَا تَأْثِيرٌ عَجِيبٌ فِي حِفْظِ صِحَّةِ الْبَدَنِ وَالْقَلْبِ وَقُوَاهُمَا He said, generally speaking, salah has tremendous effects with respect to both the preservation and the strengthening of body and heart. He said, وَدَفْعُ الْمَوَادِّ الرَّدِيَةِ عَنْهُمَا As well as very strong properties in repair evil matters from both of them, body and heart. And then he said, beautiful words. In fact, he said, any two individuals who are tested with an impairment of some sort or an illness or a trial or a calamity, the one who prays more will end up suffering less and his outcome will end up better than the one who prays less. 
فما استدفعت شرور الدنيا والآخرة ولا استجلبت مصالحهما بمثل الصلاة and he said in reality there is no better and more effective way in repelling the evils of life and the evils of the afterlife and in reaping the benefits of them both than through salah wa sirru dhalik anna salata salatun billah he said the secret of this, of this lies in the fact that salah is a connection between man and his lord wa ala qadri salati al-abdi bi rabbihi tuftahu alayhi min al-khayrati abwabuha and according to how strong a person's connection is with his lord will the doors of goodness open up for him and accordingly will the means for evil be cut off from him. Today therefore is a perfect opportunity to incorporate this act of worship that we have just spoken about. The next time you for example are hor horrified by any type of news that is conveyed to you, roll out your prayer mat, pray two units, pray four units, prolong your prostration and share the very details of how you feel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize that a life where every possible calamity is manageable, that's not just a dream with this type of salah, a retreat of a salah being available, it's a reality. Allah said,